But our main feature today is the shooting of the two police officers at the Compton train station in Compton, California, in the Los Angeles County area. It took place a couple of days ago where this lone gunman walked up to two police officers who were seated in their SUV police uh, cruiser and opened fire and then ran away. And as of today, they have not identified who the suspect is, nor do they have a suspect in custody. They've raised the, the, the reward to $175,000 and uh, to, for in, in, any information leading to the arrest of this individual. What I want to do today is I want to offer my prayers for police officers. I thought I'd pause for just a moment to let you hear that. Uh, I want to offer my prayers for them. You may say, but I didn't hear you offer any prayers for George Floyd. I didn't, and I ain't. Well, I didn't hear you offer any prayers for Jacob Blake. I did not, and I'm not. You know, uh, I was, uh, Elizabeth and I were in Las Vegas uh, some time ago. And uh, we were going out to dinner at uh, the Bellagio Hotel. Yeah, of all things, right? And we took a cab. And I actually I had the students out at Las Vegas once as well. But at any rate, uh, I was in the cab driving. The traffic was awful that day. So I said to the tra cab driver, and he was complaining about the traffic, I said to him, you know, when I'm driving in New York, usually somebody tries to get in front of me. You know, I don't always let them. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but if there's a taxi driver or a bus or a man with a truck, uh, and you know, that's obviously, you know, carrying goods or whatever, I generally just give way and let them get in front of me. I, I'll, I'll, I'll even stop all traffic and let a taxi or a bus get in front of me. And the reason why I do that, I told a taxi driver, I said is because these people are working. A taxi driver is working, though he's got to may not have anybody, or a bus driver, he's working. Give him a break, he's on the job. And the reason why I'm gonna pray for police officers today is because that's their job. That's their livelihood. That's what they have chosen to do. They've chosen to be police officers. Uh, Jacob Blake may have chosen, I don't know what he had chosen to be. But the other thing is a reality, and that is this. I thank God that there are police officers in the community where I live. I do, because were it not so, uh, there ain't no telling what kind of mayhem would erupt on an hour-to-hour -hour basis. Now, I'm not saying because I'm going to pray for these police officers or pray for police officers in general that all police officers are good. I didn't say that. Did you hear me say that? I didn't say that. No, oh, I can. You don't want me to tell you. Don't want, you don't want me to go over my, my, my good butt kicking. I mean, I got my butt kicked by four police officers in Miami Beach. You don't want me to tell that again. Okay, I ain't going to go over that no more. So, you know, but, there, but, I, but these men, this is their chosen this is their chosen occupation. And, and they're not all good. Some of them, mo most, most of them are, but some of them are not. But I think what happened the other day, and it happened in Brooklyn, New York, going back a couple of years ago, where two police officers were sitting in a squad car in Brooklyn, out in the Bed-Stuy section of Brooklyn, and someone walked up and busted a cap on both of them, on the police officer. This happened right in Compton, uh, Los Angeles, just the other day. And there are probably more police officers shot and killed in the line of duty every year than there are so-called black people who are alleged to be brutalized by police officers. So I, I'm going to offer my, my, my prayers for them. I, 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 I believe that we need a law and order society. Now I'm not mimicking Mr. Trump, Tribulation Trump. I'm not mimicking him. But there must be someone to maintain, if you will. I'll tell you something, that there are some vicious and crazy people that will kill and maim and rob you, and police officers are on the front line every day. And so I'm going to pray for them. I'm, my prayers does not mean that I believe that every police officer is a saint. I don't. Many of them are gangsters. I know that. But I think as I pray for people in general, I think I want to focus on praying for police officers. What happened to those police officers? One was a 31-year-old mother of a three-month-old, I think, 
police officer. She had just joined the force 14 months ago, and the other one's a 24-year-old. These are young people just starting their careers as police officers. They were not attacking the young man. They were simply sitting there. And then there is this, this person whose names I will not call, who is out at the St. Francis Hospital where they were taken and thank God they are surviving, who's standing outside the hospital saying, pig, die, oink, oink, pig, die, die, pig, die. You know, what if a police officer walked to the hospital where Jacob Blake was and started standing outside his hospital and say, if a group of people like the white supremacists, or if you will, if they are, and the Boogaloo Boys or somebody like that, stood outside, or the Ku Klux Klan stood outside the hospital where Jacob Blake is and said, die, die, whatever it is, die, die, die. Suppose they did that. How would you feel about that? I don't think you'd find that very reputable. But this is what's happening in California, and this is what's happening in the na nature of who we are as, as a people. So I, I, my, as I'm talking now, I'm even offering prayers for, for the general cadre police officer. And mind you, I, you know, this whole thing of driving while black, well, the same could happen to me. Now, I, I'm not, I don't get stopped very often, but I could get stopped by a police officer who would want to give me some trouble. Can I, can I insert this? <laughs> I'm, I'm being all sober and everything, and, you know, and I'm really serious. I really am serious about praying for police officers. I'm going to put down a prayer in just a moment. I am. Uh, can I say this? Can y'all let me put this in? I just, this is a, this is a, I, I, I just want to get this in uh, <laughs> as a part of the humorous part of who I am. <laughs> you know, so if you really want to, <laughs> If you want to, if, if you get stopped by a police officer, right, you're driving around, you're tooling around, and you figure you might get stopped by a police officer, always have a box of donuts with you. <laughs> and reach and grab the donuts and put them on the dashboard and put your hands on <laughs> So when the police officer rolls up on the, on the side and tell you to roll your window down, the first thing you're going to see is them donuts. <laughs> now, please, now, now I need people to pray for me. I need somebody to forgive. I need a police officer. Please forgive me for that. Maybe I should not have said it, but I, I do declare that uh, I, uh, I, I wanted to be able to, <laughs> to, to say that. But here, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hey, Heavenly Father, I, I come today, and an awful thing that has happened, and we're at a, 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 a very vicious boiling point, a turning point in our nation. Um, the, uh, with, with, with police shootings, alleged police brutality, and, and then, of course, the shooting of police officers. And as I give taxi drivers and bus drivers and when I'm driving the, the, the right of way because they, they're working and I'm just out maybe just doing something leisurely. Police officers, that's their job. They face these dangers every day. And so I'm going to pray for the good ones and I want to pray for those that are not so good and I won't even pray for the bad ones. And um, I watched a movie with Elizabeth the other night. Uh, it, called, it was called, named Brooklyn's Finest. And it was about police officers in Brooklyn, New York, in New York City. And the struggles that they go through, the problems that they have, and uh, the pressure of their jobs. And they, they seem like a very, very troubled group in many, many ways and work in very dangerous uh, events and, and perhaps don't earn enough money as perhaps they should or ought and dealing with some of the worst kind of criminals that you could have find. But I, it's in my heart, Jesus, and I know you put it there, to pray for police officers, to pray for their well-being, to pray for their safety. And Jesus, the way you put this in my heart was that the though they're bad police officers, they're far more bad criminals. They're, they're far more wicked people 
They're far more people with an intent on violence, on killing, on rape, on, and murder, every which way you look on every block and every corner and every city. There are dozens, they're, they're, they're evil people by the gross with maybe just one or two police officers like those two innocent police officers there in Compton uh, Station protecting the people that were riding the train in Compton. So the ratio of evil, bad, mean-spirited murderers, father stabbers and, 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 and mother stabbers and father rapers are far greater. So the odds or against the police force in terms of violence. So I, I, I want to pray for them, both good and bad. And those that are bad, I pray that they would find a way to find you. And those that are good, that they would be protected in their families and their children and their wives and their loved ones, that they would be able to have a peaceful career. I want to offer these prayers, Almighty God, with the, with the, with the strongest sincerity of my, 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 my belief that they have a right to have a profession and they have a right to live. And one may question, why haven't I prayed for the criminals that were killed by the police officers, those that were killed, I've outlined. But in most of the cases of those that were killed by police officers, they could have avoided it. Even Eric Garner, if he just said, arrest me, or better yet, had not been on the corner as a 45, 50-year-old man selling loose cigarettes as a way of earning a living. Maybe his problems that with the police officer with the pantaloni started not there on the corner in Staten Island, but started years early with his refusal to get an education or maybe some other criminal activity that he had been going through for years earlier. Or maybe some of the others of Jacob Blake or some of the others that their criminal activities, even Trayvon Martin would have not been in Sanford had he been in, in school in Hialeah and in, in, in Dade County. But his mother, who could not tolerate his, his evil spirit any longer, sent him to be with his father. And that's what ended him up in Sanford. So really, that's, it started with his problems earlier. And I understand that. But I do think that uh, these police officers need our love and our prayer. And I want to offer, and I want to ask others as well, if you have a heart to do it. If, you, if it's not in your heart, then don't do it. But those who may have heard my statements, pray for the police officers. That, um, and just parenthetically, if I, make my, if I don't mind, uh, if you don't mind, perhaps, I should say, I'm watching those blazing fires in California and those firemen who are rushing to those fires to put out those fires. And oftentimes they get trapped by the fires themselves and they die fighting fires as police officers die fighting crime. I've never in all my days, never once thought about as a career when I was younger of being a police officer or fireman. I know a lot of young boys like to be firemen. I, I never thought about it. I, I never desired to be a police officer or fireman or I have always wanted to be who I am right now. I, there was never any mistake about the character of person that I was even when I was in my teens, picking cotton and working the farms. Having said that, Lord, save our and bless and protect our police officers. And in your name, Jesus, we pray and give thanks. I'm James Evan Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord. Servant. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yay or nay, whether to go or to stay. 
You'll be like led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.